Good afternoon, everyone. And today, I'm, the research topic I'm going to present is the most latest research outcome of the, our group, that is learning to identify critical combination of roadway links through network embedding. And uh, this is uh, kind of like the application of machine learning in a, a kind of like traditional area, that is infrastructure management. I think of machine learning, you may be familiar with its application in a more uh, fashion manner, like uh, you can talk to Siri to ask Siri to uh, play a music for you, or you can shop online, and the, and the online system can recommend some books for you automatically. This is the way you are familiar with how the machine learning algorithm is applied. But in this topic, we are going to apply machine learning to uh, a very traditional problem, but try to solve it in a new way and a more effective and efficient way. And uh, as this work is uh, interdisciplinary research conducted collectively between me and, and D, and it's supported by Dr. Yu Zhang. And D is a PhD candidate in Department of uh, Environmental Engineering. And he's um, more focusing on the application of network science in cyber security problems. And I'm Ting Ting Zhao, I'm the postdoctoral researcher with Dr. Yu Zhang. And I'm more focusing on the application of machine learning, data mining, and OR technologies in solving transportation problems. And more specifically, I'm interested in the um, critical infrastructure resilience analysis and optimization, and also data mining and data fusion for um, traffic flow data collected both from real field and also from the simulation software. So, and this work is supported by NSF CRISP project and also another UTC seed grant and uh, we acknowledge all the support from these research grants. And this, I hope all this like background information can give you a better idea who we are and why we are, why we are working on this topic and also how we end up with this collaboration to solve this problem. Uh, then I'm going to give uh, a brief introduction about the background of this problem and also more specifically how this problem is defined, like the critical combination of roadway links identification, um, how this problem is defined in, in our research. And uh, also the literature has worked on, the, on, the, on similar topics and the research gap we identified through literature review, uh, the challenges to solve this problem efficiently and also how the, the methodology we proposed can uh, address all these challenges and solve this problem in an efficient and, and effective manner. And then D will give more uh, details on the methodology we developed, composing of both link level feature extraction, network level feature generation, and also learning models applied to identify the CCRLS. And then I will be back to uh, introduce the experiments we conducted to evaluate the performance of the methodology we proposed to see whether it can solve this problem uh, effectively or not. And also, uh, actually the result is pretty good and it's kind of out of our expectation. And then I will conclude this work and the future work uh, directions. As we all know, there are various type of disruptive events to uh, that could happen to not only transportation, but uh, all the critical infrastructures systems supporting our daily life, like natural disaster, extreme weather, and also some other man-made events. And uh, as, as a result, the components of the transportation system could, could be failed. There, if we, tr if we uh, treat the transportation network, transportation system as a network, there are both links and nodes in the network. Links are for example, road sections between intersections or between uh, ramps. And the nodes in the network could be the intersection. And uh, the failure of the component could be like roadway closed or roadway capacity degradation. Or the, the failure of the node, for example, the traffic signal could be failed after a, after a thunderstorm or after a flooding happened after a hurricane. So, all this kind of uh, components failure will lead to system performance degradation. There could be more traffic delay at intersections or longer travel time or even unmet demand in the system. All this uh, kind of consequence of the component failed by the disruptive event could uh, expose extremely high social, economic, 
and also <coughs> environmental costs to our society. So given all the Given all the facts that the events could be inevitable and unpredictable, we, there has been a lot of research effort to improve the resilience of transportation system against uh, these disruptive events, including um, to the study on how to allocate resources and also how to prioritize some, uh, some post-event post and also pre-event mitigation or prepare, preparedness efforts. This kind of um, projects are all time consuming and also expensive. So given a limited budget, limited time to deploy these projects, we should make better decision where to deploy this resource. So uh, there is also some other work on more effective contingency planning and also to conduct regional disparity assessment. However, to achieve all this goal, um, and also to support the whole decision making process. There is a more underlying or more fundamental question to be answered. That is how to understand the consequence of, of the component failed in the system. And in this work, we are going to just focus on the link failures. We are not going to start the node failures, just the link failures, but we are going to work on multiple links failed simultaneously in the system. And uh, we name it as combination of links. And then um, we are trying to identify the critical combinations as there, are, there could be extensively potential uh, combinations, especially for a large network, for a large network with large size. So I'm going to give uh, the more specifically the de definition of the problem. The critical combination of roadway links identification for transportation system, as this term is going to be used extensively, so I, I will name it as CCRLS for um, convenience. And also, as I mentioned, there could be link in the transportation system, and this is a the link failure is the focus of this work. And if the simultaneous failure of a combination of links leads to the top K influences on system performance that decline, for example, uh, increase the total travel time in the system, um, we consider it as a CCRL, that is, we consider it as a critical combination of links. Actually, we are not uh, going to work on the most critical one, but we are going to identify a group of them, that is a group of CCRLs. So we define uh, K as the critical criteria, K could be one, two, five, ten percent in our case study. We are trying to identify this portion of um, of, of networks of of uh, failure, or you can you can treat it as a failure scenario uh, in the system. Then I'm going to give an example of the application of CCRL as identification. Uh, the the application example is um, mitigation resource allocation optimization. Basically, mitigation resource allocation problem are trying to answer this question. Um, given limited budget, limited uh, time to deploy the mitigation resources or mitigation uh, countermeasures, we have a network like this. And this is a, this is a very simplified network. Actually, in the real field, the network topology could be uh, more complex and all for larger network. Um, but this simplified network, I think, is good enough for you to understand um, the basic idea of how these two problems could be connected with each other. And network A is the original network. Network uh, B shows the disrupted links in the network. And network C is the residual network. That is the uh, network after this combination of links failed. Um, and we can um, treat it as a failure scenario. Given each failure scenario, we are going to evaluate the system performance through calculating the total travel time in the system. Uh, in, a, in a more traditional way, the measurement could be conducted by um, traffic assignment, solving user equivalent model, or uh, running microscopic tra uh, transportation system simulation to get the system performance evaluation. Mm -hmm. For example, for City of Tampa, this um, size network, to get this one failure scenario evaluation, it takes uh, minutes or even more than 10 minutes. However, in order to identify the critical, uh, critical combination of roadway links, and this kind of evaluation should be done extensively. So the, the, that's why we 
need to improve the uh, evaluation performance, the time efficiency of the uh, system performance evaluation through machine learning algorithm. Um, before diving into more details about my the methodology we proposed. I'm going to give you a little bit more information about how this problem is tackled in the literature. And, and there are two um, perspectives. The first pr perspective is the key information utilized uh, by the literature. The, the first, uh, first one is more typical one, like um, based on the traffic assignment result, as I mentioned previously. It, it could be based on user equilibrium or microscopic simulation. And another type of work is they just use the topology information to conduct the, the criticality analysis. And the motivation for this type of work, firstly, is that the, the first uh, traffic traffic flow assignment based criticality analysis is time consuming. This is one motiva mo motivation. Another motivation is that the topology information can give some uh, insight on how the design features, for example, how the network is configured, uh, how the travel demand is um, distributed in the network. For example, both the city of Tampa and Orlando are big cities, but they are um, they are, they are totally different transportation systems, both from the network topology side or from the demand side. They are totally different with each other. So this kind of information, this kind of work can uh, give, provide us some insights on how the design features could impact the system performance. And the, the comparison between these two is like, they, they are pursuing two directions to either improve the uh, accuracy or the time efficiency of identifying critical components. Uh, therefore, a more natural uh, following up question to ask is whether can we combine <coughs> these two type of information together to bridge the gap between efficiency and accuracy? So this, this is another perspective to classify the literature. Uh, that is whether they are working on single critical component or um, multiple links filled in the system as a critical failure scenario. And there are very, actually there are very few studies targeted on the identification of the CCRLS. And uh, in one's work, they, based, uh, they proposed a method based on bi-level optimization to solve, to solve uh, the network the network is similar. This problem is similar to network design problem. And their findings is like, uh, firstly, the CCRL is not simply a combination of critical individual links, which means that the critical combination links may, may, be, uh, may be composed of links that are not critical at all by themselves. So the second observation is that the links within the CCRL are not necessarily close to each other. And all this observation uh, indicate that the identification, identification of CCRLS is much more complicated um, than solving a single link criticality analysis problem. And then we can conclude the, uh, the, the research gap identified from this pr perspective is that the computational burden of optimization-based or simulation-based system performance evaluation directly limited most of the literature to work on a single link combination, single link criticality analysis in, instead of um, multiple links filled simultaneously. And uh, the problem we are going to target, we are going to solve is the CCRLS, is multiple link filled simultaneously. And this, this in this slide, I summarize all the challenges to solve this problem in an effective and efficient manner. The first challenge is test uh, time efficiency, and uh, the, this challenge has been explained in the previous slide. And the second challenge is also mentioned in the previous literature review, that is uh, how to combine two type of different information, both topology information and the network flow information together in one uh, methodological framework to solve this problem. And the third, the third challenge is that, in, as in the real field, the network topology uh, and also the network size, the network, uh, the, the demand distribution in the network is totally different with each other. We should make sure, or uh, we should guarantee that the methodology we proposed could be generalized to different networks. So this is the generalizability uh, challenge. To address all these three challenges, we proposed a machine learning based uh, system performance evaluation instead of the more traditional simulation based or um, optimization based system performance evaluation. And to address the second challenge, that is to 
combine two type, how to combine two type of information together. We uh, apply the networking binding technique to combine these two type of information together. Um, actually, we can uh, abstract link level features. For each link, we, we can capture the, both the topology feature of this link and also the, the flow assigned to this link, this information as the, this is um, serving as the input to the machine learning to be trained in the next step. To address the generalizability challenge, we applied the idea of bag of words. Uh, and this, this idea is, is applied extensively in natural language processing. And uh, this method can help us to, gener to, make, to generate the same number of network level features, um, even for different networks. As for different networks, the number of links in the network is different with each other. And we are, we are going to make sure the network level feature, although the link level feature could be, the number of link level features could be different with each other for different networks. But the network level feature we abstracted from the link level feature will be, um, have the same number for different networks. Then we can facilitate the, uh, the training of the machine learning model for the next step and make sure the generalizability of the proposed method. Um, this two point together answering the question how to build the learning model. And then uh, I will give the stage to Dee and he will <laughs> introduce more details uh, regarding the methodology we proposed. Yeah, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Dee from uh, Electrical Engineering Department. So next, thanks to uh, Dr. Zhao introduce the background and motivation about this work. Next, I'm going to uh, introduce about details about the methodology part. So uh, first, let us look at a, a brief overview about our methodology. So the problem we want to solve uh, can summarize as uh, given a set of combination uh, road links of certain road uh, transportation system. Uh, we aim to identify the most critical combinations. So uh, we consider e each combination road links of a uh, road transportation system as a network sample. Uh, for example, there are three uh, network samples. Some uh, has no disrupted links. Some has certain disrupted links. Uh, yeah, each sample can have uh, a number of disrupted links. Uh, also, uh, for each network sample, we associate them with a system cost. It can be calculated uh, by the uh, traffic assignment. The, uh, using the total travel time after we apply the traffic assignment as a system cost to describe the network. Uh, for example, we can say the cost of this one is 100%, since there's no uh, disrupted links. And this one may be 120%, uh, and so and so. Uh, so we, are, we proposed to use learning techniques to identify the CCRLs here. Uh, basically, every learning techniques we have uh, two phases, the learning phase and uh, the testing phase. Uh, in the learning phase, we are going to uh, use the characteristics of the already known data uh, with the uh, network structure and the ground truth cost to build up the model, and then in the testing phase, we try to predict the, the cost given a network sample that has uh, certain disrupted links. Uh, yeah, so uh, this figure actually shows the uh, framework of our proposed methodology. Uh, yeah, in the training phase, uh, we have this, uh, this part of the components are uh, uh, ineffective. So our input it will be a transportation network sample. Then we are going to calculate the ground truth uh, using a network performance assessment, uh, per, uh, assi assessment component. Uh, uh, in our experiment, we use user equilibrium based traffic assignment to get a traffic as assignment and to get the total travel time. And uh, after that, for each network sample, it will go through a whole process, including the uh, link level feature extraction, 
uh, network level feature generation and the learning based CCRL identification. Uh, basically, those two components trying to extract the uh, information from the networks, and this component trying to use those information to build up the uh, learning models. And uh, in the testing phase, uh, we don't have the ground truth, but we, we, we want to use the learn model to uh, predict the system performance of the given uh, transportation network sample. So next, I'm going to give uh, you some details about those components. Uh, so the first one is link level feature extraction. So uh, we categorize all the link level features into uh, three classes. Uh, the first class, we call it link design features. Uh, those are all the features directly coming from the road transportation uh, system or transportation networks, uh, such as the free flow time, capacity, or length of uh, each link within a transportation network. So uh, it is designed by the transportation system, so we call it uh, design features. So the next part, we call it flow features. Uh, the purpose of these features is we try to capture the OD information of a given transportation network. So uh, because if we only have the information of the uh, transportation network, we actually don't have the OD information. To capture the OD uh, information, what we propose is that we apply the traffic assignment on the initial transportation network that, that, uh, that does not have any disruptive links. And we use initial traffic assignment uh, as the flow features. Also, the link generalized cost generated from the initial uh, traffic, uh, initial traffic assignment of the uh, transportation network. So the third part of the feature uh, are topology features. Uh, in this part, we want to answer the question, what are the most important nodes or edges in a transportation network based on topology information? Uh, also, uh, we propose four uh, type of topology features. Uh, next, I'm going to describe uh, each one of them. Uh, and remember, the nodes and edges are actually interchangeable because we can get a dual network of the transportation network by switching the nodes or the, uh, and the links. Uh, so the first type uh, topology feature is between centrality. Uh, basically, this feature try, try to identify the nodes or links that make connection between disconnected components. So uh, in transportation system, we identify the usage might be uh, using this, try to identify the links uh, which have a large influence on the transfer of items through the uh, network. Uh, as you can see from this network, those red dots are all the nodes with higher between centralities. So if we remove those nodes, what will happen? So it will result in certain uh, disconnected components. That's why uh, those uh, nodes are very important based on this criteria. So uh, the next topology feature is alpha centrality. This one to identify the nodes or links that is closest to all the other nodes or links. So in a transportation system, it means the hubs uh, which can rap rapidly access to all the other nodes. Uh, as you can see from uh, the same network, the example, what we identified using the alpha centrality here, those nodes are highly connected with all the neighbors, which are the hopes uh, in the transportation system. So the uh, third topology feature is harmonic centrality, which try to identify the nodes or links connected to the most highly connected nodes or links. Basically, those nodes are connected to the most important transport, transportation hub. So from last figure, uh, we identified this node might be the most important transport, transportation, transportation hub based on the alpha uh, centrality. And all its neighbor will be identified as uh, the nodes with higher uh, harmonic centralities here. Okay. So, uh, yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah, okay, so the next one, uh, next topology feature is page rank, uh, which try to identify the nodes or links that are important 
if it linked from other important nodes or links, or itself is highly connected. So basically, in transportation network, we want to use this uh, feature to identify the links uh, which potentially need or have high traffic flow. So I, I did not use the uh, same network because uh, use that large network to, to show this case will be very messy, so I create uh, one of mine. So uh, you can consider this one is Cutter, and we have ENB, ENG, ENA, CMC, and uh, BDG, which is the parking building. And uh, all the links are uh, directed, which means uh, you can only go from ENB to Cutter. Uh, this one is just an example here. So uh, next, we want to use PageRank to identify based on this criteria which are the most important. So uh, this one shows a result here. Uh, after the calculation, Cutter is the most important, and the uh, parking building is the second one. So this is because so all the nodes are linked to Cutter, so this one is highly linked. So that's the most important one. And the parking building is also important because it got link, links from the uh, kind of important nodes. So it's kind of second important compared to all the others. Uh, so after we got all the uh, link level features, can we directly building the model using uh, those features, like uh, directly using those features to, to represent a transportation network? For example, we can just uh, concatenate all the link level features together. Yeah, uh, it looks very simple. However, we are going to face some problems here. So the first one is uh, the transportation networks uh, can have arbitrary number of links. Uh, for example, of course, the, the, the network of Tampa and the network of Orlando are going to have different number of links. And uh, even for the for, for one transportation network, uh, sometimes it has like many disrupted links. Some sometimes it has less disrupted links. So we, we consider they have uh, different number of links. However, mo and most learning techniques need to take fixed length features as an input. Uh, of course, there are some other pre-processing methods in deep learning, and uh, here we just focus on some most common te techniques. Uh, the second the second uh, the second challenge might be uh, how to determine the order of the links to concatenate all the uh, link level features. So, uh, different instance of the same network can have different order, and different networks can have different order. So for example, this one. So right now, we name the Fowler as Fowler and the Fletcher as Fletcher. What if we switch the name? Uh, how can we track the order of the, 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 the links of a, a transportation network? If we directly concatenate them together, and we put Fowler before Fletcher, if we switch the name, uh, the, the feature are going to change. So that will become a problem. Also, for different networks, we also have the problem. For example, uh, there's a follower uh, uh, in, in Tampa, but there's no, no follower in Orlando, right? So that's the uh, second challenge here. So it requires it require us to transfer the link level features uh, into fixed, sized, and other uh, agnostic uh, network level features um, for the purpose of uh, like network classification or solve our problem. The next question is how. So before introduce how, uh, let me compare the item in a uh, transportation system, the transportation networks, to the items uh, in natural language processing, the documents. They share a lot of similarities. So uh, this part shows the characteristic of the networks, and this part is for the documents. So networks are composed of uh, a lot of links and documents composed of a lot of words. And uh, networks, as I uh, introduced last slides, can have various number of links, and documents across can have various number of words. And for the uh, networks, uh, it link level features can be very high dimensional. So we introduce uh, three categories of the features and uh, nine, uh, nine features in total. And, uh, it can be even higher dimensional. And the words in documents can actually also have high dimensional. For example, for the same words, uh, the words with the same meaning, it can be represented by diff different language. We can consider different language as uh, the, the different dimensionality. So 
since they share many uh, similarities, so we, are, we, we, we thought, can we uh, apply some, some, some method in uh, natural language processing to uh, process the networks in the transportation system? So uh, we start from very uh, popular and uh, kind of simple model called Bagel Words model. Uh, basically, this is a way of extracting features from documents for use in modeling, such as indexing, uh, information retrieving, retrieving, and uh, many other machine learning tax techniques like uh, document classification, those kind of things. Uh, so these slides, I'm going to give a, a quick introduction about the bag of words, just uh, make sure everyone uh, know part of the detail, how to like quickly build up the model. So. Uh, the aim of this model is try to do this. So given a text, uh, we want to identify the rep representation of it using the back of its words, disregarding grammar and even word order, but keeping the uh, major characteristics that can do the job uh, described in uh, the last slides. So uh, basically to build a, a back, of, back, of, back of words model, you need uh, three steps. The first step is you, uh, you want to identify uh, the item, uh, uh, the itemized uh, feature detection, which uh, the, 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 uh, the item feature uh, in, in your problem. For example, in the document, we, uh, we consider the words as the smallest feature. So given two sentences, uh, the first one, John likes to watch, watch movies. Uh, second one, John likes movies. Mary likes movies too, so we consider each word as a feature for that sentence. So the second one is we want to identify the co word dictionary, so uh, which are the unique words of those sentences. And those are the unique words we identify from all the documents. Uh, John likes to watch movies, Mary too, okay? So we have the uh, basic features and the dictionary. Uh, next. Next, we are going to use both of them to build the uh, data representation, uh, basically using the back of words model. We are going to use the unique words as the keys. And here, uh, we use a term frequency, which means the number uh, of the key uh, appeared in those sentences uh, as actually value of the data representation. For example, in the first sentence, join appeared once, appeared once, so we put one here uh, for the key of join. And the, in the, this sentence, legs appears two times, so we put two here for the, uh, for the legs here. Uh, there are many other, uh, other representations other than the term frequency you can use uh, under this bag of words model. Later on, we are going to introduce another, and there are many others uh, you can consider. Uh, for your own interest. So uh, then we learned the back of words model and, and how to use that to generate uh, transportation network level representation for our problem. So that's what we are going to answer here. Uh, so first, we need feature detection. So we already have the uh, uh, item features, which are all the link level uh, feature extractions. Uh, next, we want to identify the co word dictionary of those features. So we consider each type of the link level feature as one type of language, and each language can have his own dictionary, right? So right now we want to identify, uh, we are going to show an example how to identify the dictionary for what well, language, language in the network. Uh, so we are going to use cluster approach, approach to identify uh, those dictionary. So here's an example. Uh, so each node, each node here is actually represented a transportation network, our transportation network instance, uh, using uh, 2D link level features. And uh, then we directly apply the uh, cluster methods. It can be k-means or any other cluster methods to cluster uh, those representations to different clusters, then uh, it automatically results in the three cohorts. For this example, it automatically results in three clusters. And we consider each cluster 
as one co-word in the 2D level feature uh, language. So basically, right now, we consider the language is a 2D uh, link level feature, and uh, it has three clusters. And each cluster represents uh, a unique word. So right now, this unique word, may, may call, we, we can call it uh, like red, black, red, red cluster, uh, yellow cluster, and green cluster. Uh, after identify the dictionary, uh, we can use the bag of words model to generate the data representation of each transportation network. Uh, finally, we can transform all the network samples into the same dimensional network level representations. Uh, so here we are. Uh, we gave another uh, type of the representation that you can change the, the TF. Uh, we actually uh, use this in our experiments, which called TF IDF, uh, which is a combination of the term frequency and uh, inverse document frequency. Uh, this this uh, one is also very popular in natural language processing. Uh, so for example, if you only consider term fr frequency, there are a lot of uh, not that useful words that has uh, very high frequency. For example, like the uh, in a document, you have a lot of them, and it has very high uh, term frequency. Uh, but, uh, but it does not mean it, it is important there. So uh, in words document, for instance, try to identify the important words, uh, which means it happened high, very high frequency in one document, uh, but less frequency in all the other documents. For example, in all my papers, it has my name. So my name is actually important for that papers. If you want to uh, find that paper using my name, it's much easier than using very high frequency words like the or a uh, in, uh, for that one. So that's the purpose why they designed this way. So TF IDF is just try to multiply them together. But 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 the purpose of design this is actually for, for the problem in uh, in the natural language processing, like documents have those kind of features. Like uh, there are a lot of uh, high frequency uh, words, but may not be that important. But we actually don't know whether the uh, transportation network have the same features. So uh, you can see the results uh, when we uh, present that using uh, TF IDF. Uh, so after we got other features, we are going to talk about how to build in the models. Basically, we have uh, two phases. So in the training phase, uh, we are going to use network level features coupled with the ground truth uh, CCIL information, uh, which can be the total travel time of uh, each transportation network or other uh, measurements, criteria, uh, whatever you want to use uh, to train the samples to build up the learning models. Uh, in the testing phase, uh, given, uh, given a transportation network, we want to uh, using the model to identify um, whether it's uh, critical or not uh, in terms of that measurement or criteria. Uh, so in our work, we try three categories of learning approach. So first one is regression. We use random forest. Uh, so basically, this kind of method is try to, uh, I've given you a set of data, you build out a model, you try to predict the target value of a given, uh, given data. And uh, the second is classification. We use support vector machine. Uh, uh, so in the training, uh, we label the data as critical and non-critical. Uh, and we try to build a model, uh, try, try it best to separate uh, those, two, uh, those two data sets. And in the testing, we want to do the same thing, uh, try to identify whether it's critical or, uh, or non-critical. And the third kind of uh, measure is ranking. Uh, it actually uh, has been uh, used uh, in many natural language processing uh, problems. So uh, actually, bag of words is originally designed for a kind of, kind of ranking problem. Uh, ranking is I given you a list uh, of items and given you a criteria, uh, you want to uh, uh, you want to rank those list of items based on uh, that criteria. For example, in searching, I gave you a keyword. You want, want to find which document is the most, uh, the, it, 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 it's, it's the closest to that keywords. 
So that's the ranking we want to uh, solve. So here, what we want to identify is which, uh, which network is most critical, or uh, which uh, link combinations are, most, are the most critical here. So uh, other than that, we apply some other learning techniques to, to cover certain problems. Uh, for example, uh, here we aim to find the CCRLS, which might be the top 1% of all the samples. So it will automatically result in the imbalance of our training data set. So uh, you can directly see the example here. So for example, uh, those are all the critical uh, network instances, and those are the uh, non-critical ones. So if we directly building uh, our learning model from that data set, uh, the performance may not be good because it's highly imbalanced. So the result will be it has higher pro probability predict the given instance as non-critical. To solve this issue, we, we use under sampling. So basically, we randomly select the same amount of uncritical disrupted network instances from the uh, large set to make a balance, uh, to build a balanced model. Uh, however, this caused another issue because uh, originally we have a lot of data. Right now, we only use subset of the data, so we didn't take advantage of the uh, whole data set. So then we also combine that with with the ensemble learning here, uh, which is a st strategy of combining multiple hypotheses, uh, like multiple learning models together to fi finally form a better one. So, which often leads to a better results here. So you can directly see the example here. So uh, we have training data, which is very unbalanced. Then we are going to apply the under sampling to sampling a lot of subset of that data. So you can consider each sum of here is an under sampling result uh, using the previous method uh, to get a, a, like a sub training data set. And we are going to use each sub training data set to build a model. And in the testing phase, we are going to apply a voting strategy to make a final decision. So if uh, most of the models decide it is a critical link, we consider it is a critical link combination. OK. So yeah, next part is about our experimental evaluation. I'm going to pass to uh, Dr. Zhou. OK, uh, thanks, Steve, very much for presenting the methodology we proposed to solve this CCRL as identification problem. So then we evaluated the performance of the proposed methodology based on four case study networks. These four networks are very typical and popular transportation networks with different sizes, different number of nodes, number of links, number of zones, and with different, also with different topology, different demand patterns. Um, that's why we choose these four networks to evaluate the performance of the methodology to see whether it can be generalized to different networks. Then we ch for these four networks, we solve the user equivalent model for, um, for four group of, for three group of failure scenarios. For each group of equipment, we have one specific number of links filled uh, simultaneously in the system. That is either three or four or five links filled simultaneously. Um, and this user equilibrium result can serve as the ground truth to train the to train the machine learning model. And for each group, we generate five thousand network samples with randomly selected links filled in the system. Then we separate all the for each group, we separate all the five thousand network samples into two groups. The first group have uh, eighty percent of the samples. Um, which serve as the training data site, and the rest of them serve as the testing data site. Then we can train the model for both regression, uh, classification, and the ranking for these three different type of methodologies. We can train the model and then use the testing data site because, because we, we still have the ground truth information for the testing data site. We just assume we don't have that information just use the uh, machine learning model to predict whether this combination is critical or not, and then compare the performance with the ground truth to evaluate the performance of the 
uh, methodology we proposed. And we have three effectiveness metrics, that is F1 score, precision, and recall used to evaluate this performance. For the first three, um, first two, that is precision and recall, is like they are focusing on different aspects and try to balancing between the tr true positive, false positive, and also false negative. Tr tr uh, there are four areas that's shown in this figure, indicate different areas, either based on whether it is critical in ground truth and also whether it is critical based on our estimation results. And these two measures are different, can, can capture different aspects of the performance of the methodology. And F1 score is kind of like the uh, combination or integration between precision and recall. When, only when both precision and recall are high and also they are balanced, mm -hmm. we can achieve a bi better F1 score for the performance evaluation. So F1 score is like a more uh, overall performance evaluation. In terms of the, um, some of the techno techniques we used, we are going to compare, as Dee mentioned previously, for the bag of words model, we have two different techniques, either frequency, term frequency, or TF-IDF. We are going to compare the performance between different link, uh, network level feature generation methods. And in terms of the network we used, we can, we can calculate the link level features and also generate the network level features based on either the deleted network or the residual network. The deleted network is just the links field, and the residual network is the network after the, the failure scenario happened to the network. And then overall, we have uh, 14 feature combinations, and we select none of them to present the result to make it easier to draw the figures to, to observe, to make the observations. This is a uh, this, in this slide, only, only the F1 score result is, is uh, illustrated. And we can um, observe that the F1 score, uh, for, we, for each figure, the first one is regression, result, the second is classification, and this is ranking. And each row is for different um, networks. And the Sioux Falls network, we can see that has lower F1 score than other networks. Because uh, Sioux Falls network is smaller, and it's like um, highly abstracted network, and we cannot capture um, enough topological information based on the simplified network. So the, the result of Sioux Falls is not as good as other networks. Uh, for the feature combinations in this, as shown in this figure, it's, 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 uh, in, the, in the green box, this is three group of features. This three group of features are all based on TF-IDF, and this result indicate that TF-IDF uh, didn't work as well as TF in other feature combinations. So although, as John men mentioned, um, as Dee mentioned, TF-IDF may have better performance in the context of natural language processing, but in our research problem, TF works better than TF-IDF. Another uh, observation is that our methodology can be generalized to different failure scenarios. with different number of links filled in the system. As, as shown in this bar, um, different color indicate different failure scenarios with either five, three, four, or five, five links filled. And for the, for the green color, we conduct the, the model training based on the combination of the number, combination of different number of links filled in the system. That is, we combine, uh, we combine the network samples with <laughs> with either three or four or five together to train the model to, to see whether the performance of this kind of model trend based on the mixed mixture of different number of links failed can still give us good performance. Actually, uh, the result of mixed samples mixed together is even better than the other cases with specific number failed in the system. In this slide, I'm going to show not only, uh, not just the F1 score, but also recall and precision. And based on this observation, we can see that this, um, the first one is F1 score, the second one is precision. And in terms of F1 score and precision, we can see that uh, the blue color is, in, is uh, ranking, the other two is regression and classification. We can see that ranking has better performance than classification and regression. Uh, in terms of 
F1 score and precision. However, in terms of recall, classification has better performance than ranking and regression. Another, uh, uh, another point to make is that our methodology can be generalized to different critical criteria. As I mentioned previously, K is the critical criteria. And we have, sorry. And for this, for this result, we can see that we, with each, with each um, methodology, for example, regression, and for each, for the same network, if we change the critical criteria, the performance between the different um, different criteria is still consistent with each other, which indicates that the methodology we proposed <laughs> can be generalized to different criteria, uh, critical criteria K. Uh, besides the eff effectiveness analysis, we also conducted efficiency analysis, that is to compare the uh, time, the computational time needed for our method compared to the traditional traffic assignment model. As this is the, like the, a uh, key motivation to propose this methodology is that the traffic assignment model is not time efficiently uh, when we are trying to solve um, uh, the critical combination link identification problem. So we compare the computation time between TA model and the model we proposed. Actually, the model we proposed is here. It's much uh, less than the time needed for traffic assignment model. And also, it's pretty consistent when we are increasing the number of links in the network. However, TA model, the computational time increased nearly exponentially when the number of links increased in the network. To make it clear, this is the comparison between the three methods we proposed. And we can see that regression is the most uh, time efficient, and uh, classification is the second one. And ranking uh, take a little bit longer to get the result cap to, to be calculated. Okay, uh, that's all the, based on all the literature review to explain the motivation of this work and also the uh, introduction about the methodology and also the performance evaluation results, we can uh, make the conclusion, what is the contribution of this work? Um, firstly, the, the motivation of this work is uh, s stemming from the, the experience we are working on the critical um, <coughs> infrastructure resilience project. And we noticed that the traditional way of system performance evaluation is not um, time efficiently, it's not worked in a time efficient ma um, manner. That's why we propose to use machine learning based algorithm to solve the uh, system performance evaluation problem. And in order to integrate um, two types of information together, topology, either topology on the flow assigned to the, each link to combine these two information to, together, we applied network embedding to abstract the link level features. And in order to make sure the model we proposed is generalizable to different networks with different number of links, we applied the idea of bag of words to, to make sure the network level feature uh, extracted has the same lens for different networks. And then we can, based on the uh, experimental evaluation to test whether the methodology we propose is efficient and also uh, effective and also can be generalized. And um, as we can see that the methodological framework we proposed is pretty effective and efficient. So in the future, uh, uh, one direction we would like to explore is to apply some other complex network embedding techniques and also other network language, natural language processing representation techniques to, the, to this framework to test their performance to see whether we can get even better performance based on other models. And another direction is to apply this methodology to some other similar uh, problems in other transportation networks, for example, aviation network, or even for other domains like um, water, for example, distribution water networks still have the similar um, challenge for a similar, still have the similar challenge to this work to identify the critical combinations of distribution, water distribution network. They still have the topology information and also the flow information, which could be combined together using this methodological framework. And also like uh, communication network, we can, uh, we can apply this methodology proposed to different networks to test its performance in different contexts. 
and that's pretty much of this um, this research we have finished. And uh, thanks very much for your time. And welcome um, welcome any questions you may have, and also further discussion if you are interested in this topic.